Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. We're right down the street, actually, um, um, right next to the 495 in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've ever seen my presentations regarding elder law, I'm always talking about Frank and Mary and their goal, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means right here. They don't want to move to Marlboro. They don't want to move to San Diego with their kids. They want to stay around. So if you identify with that, the point of this show is to help you figure out who the people are that you need to know and what the things are, the programs are you need to know about in order to stay right where you are. My co-host, Shelby Marshall, as the cliche says, needs no introduction, right? She's just been, <laughs> become a legend here in Westboro, you know, as a selectman and, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So she ends up, among other things, finding all of these guests, and I just provide comic relief. So, Shelby, whom do we have today? This is a wonderful, a wonderful guest, right? Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is just sounds like a lot of fun. So whom do we have and what are we going to talk about? Yeah, so, Arthur, great to see you as always. Uh, Happy New Year uh, to all of our guests out in Westboro TV land. Thank you, as always, to Westboro for bringing us a fresh new year of programming of Frank and Mary to the community. And uh, we have a, a fun and interesting guest um, with us today, a great way to kick off the new year. Uh, we have, um, and, and one of the features I, I think, Arthur, that you and I had talked about bringing to the um, to the community this year is not only the programs and the things you need to know about, some of which are pretty heavy and serious topics. We'll certainly be talking about the vaccine and, and how do you get it and, and all of that, but also to feature really the amazing people we have in this community because Westboro is this amazing quilt of people with a variety of talents and uh, they give those talents to us and uh, share them with us in many ways. And so today's guest is Luann Crosby. Welcome, Luann. Hello. Yeah. Great to be here. And she may be a stranger to some, but probably not to many. Um, uh, so, uh, Luann, welcome. Um, and, um, you know, I had asked um, if Luann would join us. Um, we're going to uh, kind of really get into sort of her musical talents. But, Luann, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in Westboro? And um, take, us, yeah. take us through your life in a short oh, few minutes. Nice. Okay. Um, I uh, moved to Westboro a little over 30 one years ago when I was pregnant with my daughter and um, uh, I had been living in Germany where I had a band. Uh, this is in the 80s. I moved back and I was staying with my um, sister and her husband in Wellesley. Um, and we were, um, uh, my husband at the time and I um, wanted to buy a house and we needed to get somewhere where we could afford it and we couldn't afford Wellesley. So we just drove until we could afford it. And we, at that point, hit Westboro. And now I knew Westboro because of the old Vienna. Uh, being a musician, you know, familiar with that. And I saw an ad for a, a little historic house over on High Street. We went and looked at that. And we ended up, we didn't buy that one. We ended up on Morris Street, but um, in a historic house because um, I grew up in a historic house and I love historic architecture. And uh, anyway, so... Um, yeah, so we, we moved here then, uh, lived in um, at, on Moore Street, moved to Adams Street, but where I really wanted to be was in a historic house in downtown Westboro. And, and there I'm you sure are we'll today. And here I am today. Yeah. yeah and we'll talk a little bit about that yeah. more as sort of later in the show and kind of yeah. your, your your view of that and kind of what you hope to see for Westboro in in the future, which I know will actually be part of its history. So, yes. um, so um, uh, you have uh, a, an amazing background. First of all, you, so you, you've been in a band in Germany. So tell us about yeah. kind of this musical uh, uh, background. Yeah. So I started singing when I was about four and I was in my first talent shows about five or six. I wrote my first song at 12 and I've written about 300 songs. And um, I, um, I performed, um, I, my first real paying gig was when I was about uh, 17 or 18 at the Ground Round in Norwell. I did every Monday night. Wow. Uh, and then um, the real paper, uh, for those of you who were. Plus, you got free paper, popcorn, right? Uh, <laughs> Didn't you get free popcorn with that? Wasn't that what the I ground round? I can't eat popcorn and sing at the same yeah. time. So no, and when no people popcorn. were were reading the real paper, yes, and, and watching the cosmic muffin or listening That's to. That's right. So I was using yeah. the real paper to because I decided I needed a band. Anyway, I, en I ended up getting into a band. 
met my then husband, bass player. Uh, we had a band in Boston, uh, the uh, Luann Crosby band, uh, for a number of years. And then our roommate lived in Germany. We went to visit, moved back to Germany. We went and said, ooh, this is a great music scene. So we moved to Germany, put wow. a band together with, with German guys, three other German guys. And, uh, and then, as I uh, said, we came back. We kept want we said, you know, we want to start a family. But we were too busy to start a family because we had a band. Right. Though so finally it was like, okay, we'll come back here. So, so anyway, um, I've been in a band of some sort or, or another, or I had been for about 35 years and everything, and uh, came to Westboro. And when I met um, my, my now husband, um, who I've been with for about 12 years, um, who is a historic preservation guy and, and the art and he know each other. Um, we had been together for a few months and I was gigging, you know, like at the Chicken Bone in Framingham and, you know, uh, the, you know, um, whatever uh, places in Worcester and all around um, G. Willikers. And mm -hmm. um, he would see me come back at like two in the morning with all the PA gear and taking all the PA gear out of the truck and bringing it down to the cellar and resetting it up in the rehearsal room and all this kind of stuff. And at one point, after a few months, he said to me, you know, you have a really demanding job. I actually work in biotech for the company that created, the, that made the Moderna vaccine, actually, up in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Thank you. You have a, demand, you have a demanding job um, and a limited amount of time to do music. Is this really how you want to do it? And Knowing Chris, that sounds so Chris. It is such a, it was the best thing that anyone ever asked me because I said, well, no, actually, no, I, I, I write songs, I record, I, I have all of this stuff. Do I, is this really what I want to be doing? And I said, no. So I gave up the band, I simplified, and I started playing pretty much all the time just as a solo performer with one other person. Then my daughter gave me a ukulele. Um, that was 10 years ago. And um, and just to mention, as I age, my hands, I have a lot of arthritis in my hands sure. and I have, a, has been, have been a guitar player and I do mm -hmm. a lot of jazz chords and, you know, very intricate jazz. I took jazz theory and jazz guitar and stuff, but it's hard on the hands. You need hand strength. And I'm starting to lose that. My daughter gave me a ukulele and I went, oh, my God, this is so great because so I can just walk around with the ukulele. I don't you know, I don't need a sound system anymore. <laughs> I have a projecting voice. Um, Chris and I living downtown, we all walk around the, uh, the block at night on a warm summer night. I sometimes will just bring my uke. We sit on the chairs in front of Red Barn. I play some tunes. Pretty soon we've met like half the people walking by. It's yeah, it's great. The uke is is a, is a great thing, so. <laughs> That's fantastic. So yeah. one of the other things that I think is fascinating about your background is that you not only, so you're a songwriter, but you're also a jingle writer. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because as a, at, when I was young and, you know, all, most of the songs I wrote would be, you know, love songs and, you know, all of course, songs, that was the, you know. songs expressing what I, you know, I would feel whatever, angst or anything I was feeling and I had to get it out and I wrote a song and then you know after doing that for you know 30 or 40 years you know I had expressed a lot of what I wanted to express <laughs> not that I still you know I still write some songs like that the, the inner Joni the inner Joni Mitchell is still there but oh uh, yeah uh, you know but what, you what I has realized is that um so um during 2017 I met Chris Allen in Roche Brothers, and that was the 300th anniversary, and we started chatting, and she said, maybe you should write a song. Now, all that I need is for somebody to say to me, maybe you should write a song. <laughs> so, of course, I went home, I wrote the 300th anniversary song, and I played it at all the events. It was a total blast. Um, somebody, um, actually, somebody I spoke to yesterday who I work with, you know, I, I communicate with people all over the globe, and I was chatting about how, you know, I just turned 66 in December and eventually I'm going to retire and I'm not quite there yet. But she said, you should write a song about that. Yes. So <laughs> there you go. when I was had insomnia at three in the morning, I came up with the first verse. It's going to be so good. <laughs> so, so Luann, you know, for, you know, one of the things I think that. Excuse me. So that's oh, yeah, the so sequel. That is actually the sequel that she was just announcing when we're going to bring her back for when that song. Is <laughs> right. Other verses are here. Yeah. 
But, you know, um, one of the things that I think here, you know, we, I, I've certainly been in circles where we've talked about, you know, the value of folks like yourself who are slightly younger than me, right? But, and I mean that with, with utmost respect, but you have so much to give. And, I, and that's what I see in all of the Frank and Marys that live in Westboro, mm -hmm. if you will. So what does it take, like, if, if you were to shed, you know, some light, some, um, um, you know, your influence on young songwriters, young performers, like, what does it take? What, what advice would you give them, um, um, you know, about pursuing that? Because you, I mean, you'd been doing this for a lifetime and you yeah. still love it. And, it, and it's like part of your fabric. Yes. Now, the thing is, is that when I was younger and doing this for all those years and I was writing songs and I was sending them to publishers and I was trying to get them published and I was trying to get record contracts and on and on and on. Um, and it didn't happen. And I'm still, you know, a little P.O.'d about that <laughs> because, you know, and my friend, you know, people will say to me, I'll post a song and people will post, you know, I still can't figure out why you're not famous. Right. And I'll say, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't but, either. <laughs> but one of the things is that um, when I spoke about, you know, deciding to come back from Germany and have a child, um, we made a conscious decision that we were going to have a child and we weren't going to have a child and then drag her around while we did CD release parties sure. and all this kind of stuff. You know, we yeah. actually made a conscious decision that we wanted to be somewhere and raise her in a place like Westboro, a town that we really loved and that um, could, you know, like it just didn't seem fair. So, so yes, in a yeah. way I made that decision consciously and I sure. understand that. Yeah. Um, but I have get given a few, I did something at the Milford Library, this was quite a few years ago now, but I did a um, a thing for uh, uh, middle school age kids about songwriting. And, um, you know, and that was really fun. And I, I, I do love to do to do that, yeah. you know, to, um, because people just, I, I feel like if people can tap into their creativity so they can express themselves, that's really what you know, yeah. what it's all about, or at least that's what it is about for me. Yeah. Well, it's a gift. And, and I want to, um, we'll, we'll make sure that through this, um, piece, uh, that we put up your website, luanncrosby.com. Um, you have songs out there actually just the other day, my daughter and I, uh, went out there, she knew we were, you know, we were going to do this show and she wanted to know what song you were going to perform. One of her yeah. favorite all time Luann songs is books, books. Oh, um, that's the kids it, hit. It, it is. And, um, but you have a whole kids cafe out there. Yeah. And, um, by the way, you can moo like no other cow I've ever heard. I know. Isn't that great? That was very impressive. So if Thanks. people are wondering what I'm talking about, you got to go to the website because, and you know, pigs don't say oink. No. They go, <laughs> you know, so I make the real noises. I'm not going to say oink and moo. No, you, you're, you're, uh, that was amazing. I'm a realist. Right. So, so, um, we're going to get to great. kind of. The... That was great. <laughs> that was a real pig. Thank moment. you. That was like, a... it's a hidden talent. Wow. So, but Luann, one of the things we talked about as is, is we prepare for the show is that um, your circuit, right? So you've gone from playing in some probably pretty grungy places all over yeah. the world and some really, yeah. you know, amazing places. You have a new following um, right. given your music. Tell us about that. Okay. So what happened, um, this began in 2012. My mother was at Beaumont in Northboro. Uh, she had a stroke. And um, she ended up there and I would visit her, you know, three or four times a week. I was there a lot and I would always bring my uke and I would always play. And I played for the staff. I played for the people who were there. It just became, you know, I, and so she was there for about six months before she died. She died in October of 2012. And I thought, I can't just stop going. So I have gone or I went every Sunday since 2012 until the pandemic struck. I mean, Amazing. occasionally I had um, I had business trips and I missed a few Sundays, but for the most part, I may, maybe out of that time missed, you know, 10 days. Yep. So when the, so um, I learned, you know, a lot of times somebody would say to me, uh, so I'm playing for people anywhere between 70 and 105. Right. And somebody, there was a, a woman there, Ruthie, and she used to play herself she knew every song in the world. And she'd say, 
do you know the song, If I Didn't Care? And I'll, I'd say, no, I'd come home, I'd find it on YouTube, the original version, any remakes, I'd listen, I would learn it. And the next Sunday I would go in no. and play, If I Didn't Care. Okay, so my repertoire expanded. I mean, I had a pretty good repertoire anyway, but yes. now I do um, songs from the, you know, like the late 1800s wow. to present, really. Yep. And a lot of stuff from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, so when I could no longer go and see my peeps, I call them my peeps, um, at Beaumont, I thought maybe what I'll do is put it, do a video, and then they could share it. So I went down to Westboro TV and talked to our, our friends down there because as some people might be um, familiar with the architectural walking tours with music uh, mm -hmm. that my husband Chris Noonan and I do, um, uh, we knew all the the, um, the Westboro TV people because that, that's part of their programming as well. So I said, hey, would you want to do? And they said, yes. Mm -hmm. And so I did the Peeps Musical Hour then I did the Peeps Musical Hour Part 2, and then I got my own video camera and started making lots of them. <laughs> oh, and, um, and then what happened as an outcropping from that is that I, play, I started playing memory cafes. And for those who don't know, memory cafes are usually get-togethers in the afternoon, sometimes at the library, Shrewsbury, Hopkinton, sometimes at the Bagel Place in Ashland for... <laughs> and, um, they, um, it's for uh, people with memory issues and their caregivers. Um, you know, a chance to get out for an hour or two and have a cup of coffee and mm -hmm. listen to some music. So I started playing at those and I became a hit on, on the dementia circuit, basically. There you go. And, um, you know, what's funny is that- um, They, they wouldn't see... remember your name, you know, but they <laughs> always remember the tune. But the they knew they every the... word to every song. These are people who don't remember their right. spouse sitting next to them. Yeah. I start singing, if I didn't care, and they're singing along yeah. every word. It's amazing. It is so, because it, it's a different part of the brain yeah. or something. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I love that. And I realized, I was saying to Chris, you know, I have played in front of thousands of people in large, you know, halls and all this kind of stuff. And it's as much fun for me to be in the Ashland, you know, Bagel Bistro um, with, you know, 20 people who, yeah, who won't remember me in an hour, but that hour that they right. experienced. Right. But, but I think one of the really cool things, Arthur, is that because through the help of Westboro TV and now her own video camera and, you know, just technology, she has been able to create really enduring, you know, her, her, you know, her music can endure. It's not, it, it lives on, you can replay it. And so she has people who, because of COVID, right, have been isolated, right. but their caregivers are now, are now have access to those videos and are playing them. And it has really become a soothing experience at a time of great isolation and great stress. And Luann had shared one of those stories with me that, you know, this, this one family in particular, the husband was so thankful that Luann was still with them and could provide comfort not, not only to he, but to is, you know, his wife who has dementia. That's a great story. In fact, they came, um, so occasionally what they do now is <laughs> he will, they will get in the car, they'll pick up a friend or two and they'll swing by and roll down the windows and I come out with my uke. <laughs> And I play some songs for them. And, drive by music. Yes, exactly. Right. Because um, yeah, um, when p the pandemic struck and the weather got nice, I did have a few memory cafes in the backyard. But of course, it's right. a little chilly for that. So, but a song or two in the front yard when the sun's shining isn't too bad. So, right. so speaking of COVID and and uh, all this, yeah. so um, you wrote a song that we're going to listen to in just a minute. Um, about, and it, sort of this was my inspiration for today's show because it was like, ugh, so tired of talking about COVID and when is this damn thing going to be over? Yeah. And you actually wrote a song about that, <laughs> right? I did. I write right. a song about everything. Yeah, of course you do, right? So um, this song was inspired, as you'll see, from a conversation that Luann has, as, as are many. And so uh, let's roll the tape and hear about uh, what Luann's going to do or what are we going to do when uh, COVID's over. This next song is one I wrote fairly recently. It was inspired by my sister Janice. We were socially distancing on the patio and talking about 
what we're going to do when COVID's over. She said that would make a good song. And here it is, when COVID's over. What are you going to do when COVID's over? What are you going to do when normal's no longer new? I haven't hugged since God only knows when. What are you gonna do when COVID's over? Where's the first place that you're gonna go? We're gonna stop at that little spot downtown. Unless, of course, they've lost it all and had to close it down. What are we gonna do when COVID's over? I know it feels like that might never be. But when COVID's over, that's something we just gotta believe If you're alive And if those you love survive If you have food to eat And a place to sleep Cause you aren't tossed out on the street A job that pays enough to live With a little left that you can give To those who need a helping hand Cause there's not much justice in this land Sure, we can complain Life has been a drain But now's the time to fight the fight To make things fair To make things right. That's what we're gonna do when cold is over. That's the thing that'll make it worth the pain. When cold is over, you better believe we're never going down this road again. Will we ever learn? Will we ever be concerned that people risk their lives every day just to go to work and get some pay? They're more essential than we knew they get what they are due cause on their back big bucks are made now's not the time to be afraid surely you can see the inequality well now's the time to fight the fight to make things fair to make things right that's what we're gonna do when COVID's over right now it seems like that might never be but when COVID's over things have to change and we won't go back to the way they What are you going to do when COVID's over? So that was amazing. I, I mean, I, I, um, I keep playing that song. I listen to it again because, you know, there are just little snippets in there. It's funny. It's humorous. It's emotional. Um, uh, so thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. The thing about COVID is that we, if we learn what we could learn potentially from it mm -hmm. we could be such a better society and we could be better people so the, yeah. my hope is that somehow that will make the, the <laughs> torture <laughs> um somehow you know yeah. worth it yeah absolutely so um let's pivot a little bit so Luin, you've been here a long time um i've had the 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 benefit um someday maybe we'll get chris on because he's uh, a different kind of wealth of knowledge um, <laughs> yes. um um you've been here a long time you're very vested in the community what do you love but more importantly what do you want to see for Westboro? And I'm sort of asking this twofold as a selectman but i really want you to share that with the yeah. rest of the community Okay, so I um, wanted to be downtown for a reason. I love downtown village living. I love being able to walk places and get things when I need them. But also, I just love community. You know, uh, we know all our neighbors for probably a mile around, and I'm not kidding. I mean, we know a lot of people, and a lot of it is that we walk, we talk, we sit. Now, this is the thing that I would love to see, and, and I have some I've got my pen. Uh, so um, I, I do a lot of traveling in work, a lot in Europe, Switzerland, Germany, France, you know, um, Spain. And one of the things that Europe um, has mastered and we don't quite is how in, vill in towns and village is, is having the outside an extension of the inside. You know what I, I mean? Like, for example, when we go our, for a walk around the blocks, block out in front of Red Barn, there were some chairs and a table. Mm -hmm. That's where people congregate. That's where people sit. That's where we meet people from all over the world who now live in Westboro. Um, and 
of course, we can't talk too much about the storefronts in COVID because we've lost tenants and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it would be really neat when we fill those storefronts up again, if we could somehow um, have spaces that are um, open, welcoming, and somehow bring the in and the out. Um, and I know, you know, like you do need wide sidewalks and things like that sometimes to put, but then another thing is when Bay State Common happened and we um, are moving a lot of our events, town events to Bay State Common. The problem is that Bay State Common doesn't feel like it's part of downtown. So the question is, how do you make it feel more like part of downtown? One of the things that you do, you could do, is there should be, as there is in, in Europe more, a, 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 a kind of way that finding. So there should be, there should be um, like um, paths, maybe colored, you know, pretty colored, maybe in the nice weather with window boxes that take you and you walk from downtown, and I know this is a little tricky, but you'd have to, there'd have to be a private public partnership to work, you know, to maybe get it through the, you know, the bank parking lot or whatever it is to get over there. So people know it's there, it's inviting, it brings you over there. And then once you are over there, if it could be a little more, um, a little more, instead of just a big field, you know, if there were maybe more tables and chairs, more just something to make it feel a place for people to go and congregate. Beautiful mm -hmm. summer night. Hey, let's go off down to the common, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and um, one more thing. Uh, uh, this this is unlikely and it probably wouldn't happen. But it, I, I think it's so too bad and so funny that in that um, the uh, the Ted's and um, the, the Tavalier. Uh, Asian, uh, no, um, the, the place is right on the common. Their back is to the common. Oh, you know, instead right. of the front, the front being there, yeah, and then people can sit outside and they can be right on the common, and yep. the kids can play and they can, you know, everything is fake, fake. Like if that, if the common was the parking lot and the parking lot was the common, or if the things, you know, there are yeah. just ways to do it, and I know it isn't easy, but what it takes is creativity. We were talking about creativity thinking outside the box. Um, and that that's the trick, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you, you, have, yep. to, you have to think things yep. like, now what could we do to make it more, you know, whatever. Yep. Okay. So, okay. so I have a couple, a couple of comments. Yep. Um, uh, money follows good ideas. The, 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 when you start describing what you're describing, the immediate tendency is to say, well, of course we could never afford that, but forget that, right? If you design it right, then money is just going to show up because people are going to say, "Whoa, that really looks like it's worthwhile," and it's just going to happen. Exactly. And, I think, and 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 to and so to Shelby, I think this this could be, this could be you know one or two really interesting shows would just be to talk about that. We may even you know bring in famous landscape architect Chris Noonan and have him kind of sketch out some things because you know money follows good ideas if there's a good picture, you know. So, the, um, so the, to, yes. to, to have that, and, and I just kind of make that as a, as a general observation. But the other thing, as, as you, were, you were talking, and I was thinking about the other guests that Shelby has had, when, when you think about one of the reasons why Westboro is special, Westboro is special because of the house that you moved into, because it was such a special place. It's, it, it attracts kind of interesting, creative people that want to walk around. That's why they live downtown. That's why Shelby lives downtown. Yeah. And so th that's kind of a core, which has caused Westboro to be this kind of incredible place. Because places are, you know, they're acute architect, architect, that's all important, but it's important to the extent that it's building that community, you know? Yeah. And that's why that, that you're talking about a quality of architecture, which really real, builds that community. I think it's great. That's a great idea, you know, and, and I'm sure we could develop a whole downtown plan with a jingle that went along with it. Hey, and the, I've, this, ar I've already have a few of them. Oh, no. Like, like, yes. <laughs> um, take a speak, walk around. Speaking of which, town. where's the you? <laughs> I, I have a couple. One is called This Beautiful Town. Yes. Take a walk around this beautiful town, the data and the history, some known and some a mystery. Okay, that's one. And then I have another one. Look up, look up, it's a pediment. Look up, look up, it's an E. Look up, look up. And it's all about looking up at the architecture. So, yeah. But I could add a few more. That is <laughs>
This is just great. This well, is, now Shelby, as you know, my, my job is to be timekeeper here. So I'm watching at my clock and I, and, and, and so I want you to be aware of that because I know you want to be talking a little bit about some stuff that's some stuff. That's yeah. Coming. So I do want to, Luann, thank you so much for being our guest. This is just such a refreshing, fun, invigorating, energetic way to start uh, uh, the new calendar year with Frank and Mary. Yep. So thank you for being part of it. Um, my pleasure. Um, and, uh, re, and, you know, appreciate for reminding us that COVID is almost over. <laughs> yes. It's yes. life after COVID. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so I do. Um, thank you for a couple minutes, Arthur. I do want yep. to uh, remind Frank. Yeah, stay, and Mary. Right, stay right there. So, yes, tell us tell us what's going on the next week. Yeah. So I just want to remind uh, Frank and Mary and their friends um, that um, they're um, the Martin Luther King um, uh, event celebration um, that has been become is becoming a little bit of an annual tradition here in Westboro will be taking place on January 18th. Um, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Um, we'll make sure that we get that flyer up. Um, and I think there will be PSAs as well that Westboro TV is doing. Um, this is a virtual event. It's being hosted by Westboro Connects, uh, the Westboro Interfaith Association, Central Mass Connections and Faith, and the Westboro Public Schools. Um, there are limited seats. Uh, there are 300. And this has been a sellout event in the past. So if you are interested, you definitely want to register. You can go to westboroconnects.org um, forward slash programs. Um, there will be um, English closed caption uh, that will be um, part of that and live Spanish interpretation. Um, and Westboro TV, of course, because they're amazing, will be rebroadcasting that show. So if you can't register, the time doesn't work for you. I really encourage you to um, listen in. It's become um, a really special event um, that uh, these collective organizations are bringing forward to give us, uh, um, bring that community um, and uh, thoughtful conversation and sort of enriching our lives. So thanks to all those involved. And thank you, Shelby. You've done it yet again, Luann. You're, you're you're just you're you're one of a series of just amazing Westboro people that have come on, and and I think it's a real it's a blessing to Frank and Mary. You know, it, because it empowers people. It empowers you to think that you're part of that community. And once again, and I and I love the suggestions about downtown. You know, I remember first hearing Janice Allen talking about what what is really your unique downtown zoning district, you know, which was kind of a, of a not not a standard issue historic district. It's really wonderful, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it was great. So thank you very much, Luann. Thank you, Shelby, yet again for doing this. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this. Remember, our, we're going to have a we're going to have a sing along next show. You can see <laughs> you can really sing along with those words. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you.